So why is a balanced diet required for the healthy development of bone and muscle? Well, first of all, you need vitamin D because that allows the uptake of the all-important calcium ions also consumed in the diet, which will help strengthen your teeth and bones. You'll also need diets rich in protein as they're needed for muscle growth and repair. Make sure you're aware of the differences in the type of diets people require based on their activity, their lifestyle, etc. So people with more sedentary jobs will obviously require less food, so less carbohydrates, less protein, less fat, compared with people with very physical occupations. You often find that when girls reach puberty that they suffer from anemia, and that's due to a lack of iron brought on through menstruation, which remember is the blood loss associated with a period. Pregnant women will obviously need more of everything because they need to support the growing fetus in terms of its muscle growth, bone development, production of blood, so obviously we'll need more iron, more calcium, more protein, etc., in order to support that growing fetus. Defining digestion now, Digestion is the breakdown of large insoluble food molecules into small soluble ones which can then be absorbed through the wall of the small intestine. There are two types of digestion, the first one is mechanical, the second one is chemical. So mechanical really means just breaking down that food into smaller pieces, there's no change in the chemical structure of the food. So if you think about it, the first place that mechanical digestion takes place is in your mouth, your teeth chew, breaking up that food, increasing its surface area. A second place mechanical digestion takes place is in your stomach where the stomach muscles contracting help to break down that food further and hydrochloric acid in the stomach also assists with this. Chemical digestion really means the altering in the structure of the food. It means making that food more soluble and its enzymes which are responsible for this. So in the mouth we've already discussed the mechanical digestion by the teeth but also the enzyme amylase. This will be responsible for chemical digestion the digesting of starch into maltose. Food then passes down the esophagus, so the bolus, the ball of food, passes down the esophagus with the aid of peristalsis, which is the contraction of muscles. Food reaches the stomach. I've already mentioned what the stomach does. Remember that hydrochloric acid also lowers the pH, meaning that any bacteria ingested will also be destroyed. Protease is an enzyme secreted by the stomach. It helps break down proteins into amino acids. Further peristalsis occurs in the small intestine. Remember that fiber is essential in your diet because it provides bulk to your food, it provides roughage, it aids the process of peristalsis, therefore helping prevent constipation. Moving on to bile, so remember bile is produced by the liver, stored in the gallbladder and released into the small intestine. The role of bile is twofold. Number one, it emulsifies fats, increasing their surface area, meaning that the enzyme lipase can work more effectively. Number two, it neutralizes the pH of food, meaning the enzymes released into the small intestine aren't denatured. We've already mentioned the enzymes amylase and protease. Remember the enzyme maltase, this breaks down maltose into glucose. You've got the enzyme lipase, this breaks down lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. The pancreas secretes all three enzymes into the small intestine. Now the small intestine's role is to absorb those soluble food molecules. It's adapted in order to increase the rate at which absorption takes place. The microvilli and villi increase the surface area, meaning that absorption occurs more quickly. You've got the presence of a lacteal that aids fat absorption. You've got a good blood supply, lots of blood capillaries. Thin walls provide a short diffusion distance. The role of the large intestine is to reabsorb water. By this point, you'll have reabsorbed all your soluble food molecules, leaving you with just the indigestible food stuff. This makes up the bulk of feces, which are stored in the rectum and released into the anus. Let's discuss some key definitions now. So ingestion, effectively eating, that's the intake of food. You've got Egestion, which you mustn't confuse with excretion. Now, egestion is the removal of feces from the anus, so in effect pooping. Excretion is the removal of metabolic waste. Assimilation is the buildup of large molecules from small molecules. Digestion, I've already mentioned. Absorption, I've mentioned in passing. It's the movement of soluble food molecules across the lining of the small intestine into the blood.